Welcome to Everyone Loves Guitar, where we get to sit down and talk with interesting professional guitar players and related music industry experts. If you love playing guitar, stick around. You're in the right place. Hey, everybody, this is Craig Garber from Everyone Loves Guitar, and we've got one of my favorite guitar players today from one of my favorite bands, another great band, out of, a really good band out of Sweden, a hard rock band. I hate to use the genre name stoner rock, but um, whatever. They're just a great blues rock band, and um, Matthias Mate Gustafsson is uh, their lead guitar player and uh, as contributing writer as well. Uh, the band is incredibly melodic. The band is again a Siena root, S I E N A root, uh, super melodic band. They do a fantastic job of putting hard rock, strong blues influences, and powerful, strong guitar solos. There's a lot of interplay on the records between Matthias on guitar and the Hammond B3 player, which really allows them to take their listeners very deep into some long psychedelic blues jams. Matthias has been with the band for the last two albums. He's a very creative player, he's equally adept at slide slow soulful blues or hard rock solos matthias was born in 1989 in Uppsala, sweden man i think i have genes older than you uh (laughs) he started to play guitar at nine years of age after listening to kiss and cream and he started to play in rock metal bands during his teenage years you know what you're about the third or fourth guy i've interviewed from northern europe that got turned on to guitar from kiss Okay. Yeah, yeah. A big, it's a very common. Uh, he, he toured Europe. He started touring Europe in 2008 with a heavy metal band called In Solitude. After the first release of the album In Solitude 2008, Matthias left the band after that in 2010, and he got deeper and deeper into blues guitar playing. Began playing at blues clubs around the Uppsala. And, am I saying that right? Uppsala? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Uppsala. Uppsala. Yeah. Okay. Uppsala, Stockholm area, and different blues rock bands until 2013. And then he became a member of both Sienna Root and the blues band called Lisa Listam Family Band, which is another really nice band. And he also has another project that he just started that we'll talk about later. Uh, with the Lisa Listam Family Band, they've done over 350 gigs in Scandinavia and in Germany over the last uh, four years. They've done. They've released two albums. The albums are When Money's Running Out. That was in 2004. 14 and give you everything in 2016 sienna root again is a hard rock blues band they've released seven albums since 2004 matthias has played on the last two records and those being pioneers and um a dream of lasting peace both great albums uh the band toured for pioneers two years and one of the many highlights was playing the duna jam festival in sardinia you know what i don't even know where sardinia is this is how we are in america we know new jersey California, New York, maybe Texas or Canada. It's, Canada's not even in the States. Uh, the next album release was A Dream of Lasting Peace. Great album. Really long tunes there. Sienna Root toured that whole year with that record, and they did two arena gigs as supporting act for Deep Purple in Dortmund and in Berlin, Germany that summer. They're planning on writing and recording their next album, and earlier this year, Matthias recorded an album, a new project with fellow musicians in Stockholm, and we're going to talk to him about that. And the tentative name of that band is Heavy Feather. Matthias, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Um, you, you started playing guitar at age nine. Did you grow up in a musical family? Because that's a young age. Yeah, sort of. Uh, my parents, uh, they weren't uh, musicians, but uh, they listened to uh, they listened to uh, a lot of music at home, uh, like blues, rock, and country stuff. So, uh, yeah. I was I was growing up with music, but um, they were not they were not musicians. Sure. So. So that was got but, you got you into playing guitar from listening to all the music. Yeah, I remember my dad listened a lot to Eric Clapton, and I remember he was uh, he was watching this uh, Steve Ray Vaughan live at El Mocambo when mm. I was a little kid, and great concert. Yeah. So I. I think that was, uh, um, yeah, that was, uh, uh, the trigger. Yeah. A trigger for me. Yeah. And, but, uh, the biggest trigger was kiss. I think all kids in my generation was, uh, uh we were kiss fans. Yeah. All of- Very um, much. 
Yeah, it was a TV program, I think, in 1995 or 96 or something with uh, karaoke, mm. karaoke TV show with, and then uh, one guy, he was, he played uh, I Love It Loud with Kiss, and then I was, yeah, uh, yeah, I was obsessed to Kiss after that. And and when did you, and then so you started playing guitar shortly after that or around that same time. Yeah, I was six then, so yeah, around three years later. What what was your first guitar? It was a copy of a Stratocaster. Uh, you know, I think I think it was called Neville. It was a yeah, cheap guitar. Like a like a Chinese or a Japanese copy or something. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Very cool, man. Hey, um, in 2008, you were playing with this metal band called In Solitude. And it said around that time, you sort of got deeper into blues playing. Is that why you left the band? Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, we, were, we were friends from the childhood. So I think we started the band in... Uh, when we were 14 years old or something mm. and then we uh, then we released uh, a record uh, when we were when we were 18 and on a german heavy metal label mm. and we started to tour and uh, i think it was it was great to it was a like uh, it was a dream to dream come true to tour yeah. in europe when we when we were 18 and it was ah, so fun and was very successful. But I was at that time, I was so uh, into the blues. So I was totally obsessed of um, blues guitar playing. I want to develop on my guitar playing as a blues player. So, so I realized that I, ah, I had to left the band Um and it was a very hard decision because, um, uh, yeah, as I said, it was a very successful band, and we, I knew this is gonna be, yeah, some kind of big. But I had to leave the band to play the blues. Yeah, man. What? That's a lot of stuff to do on your own at eighteen to record a record, release it, and tour all over Europe. Did you have somebody helping you guys, or like, how did you coordinate all this? Uh, yeah, the drummer, the drummer's father was a uh, musician, so we could, uh, uh. so we uh, recorded in his studio, and uh, uh, and then there was uh, uh, some German labels, and then we. Yeah, just went touring. I mean, just like that? I mean, nobody... That's really... That's great, man. Yeah, yeah, it was it was cool, yeah. Uh, what, what was the most important things that you learned out of doing that? Like, musically or just life lessons? Uh, I don't know, but it was a very fun age to tour in when you are like 18 so you didn't give a uh, you didn't give a damn though yeah i think it was just fun go and play music so you got you decided to leave the band because it was no longer right for you and your heart was in a different direction with blues what happened yeah. next hey uh, I started my own blues band and we were playing at blues clubs and uh, and everything but it was it was hard because just small clubs and and I felt it was strange to me because um in solitude they um, they were continue uh, to play and I think they released two more albums and they were uh, yeah they played with bands like down the old Pantera Pantera singers band in okay. America mm. and uh, bands like uh, what's the name uh, Pentagram and everything yeah they were touring a lot and, but, so I was uh, 
was it a mistake for me that I left the band? But I knew, I, I think I knew the whole time that it was the right decision to leave the band. Yeah. Well, I think that's probably one of those decisions that you could second guess your whole life, but you know, you got to do yeah. what feels right when it comes to music, I think, you know? Yeah. Yeah. How did you first get connected with the guys in Siena Root, and what was it about the band that appealed to you? Because I'm sure you'd had other opportunities to get involved with other bands throughout that time. Uh, they were they were looking after a, a new guitar player, uh, and we had a mu mutual friend, and that. Um, and they asked him, and he uh, uh, if he knew any good guitar bluesy, bluesy rock guitar players, and he wrote the list, and uh, my name was on that list. Hmm. Um, I think the day after I had a gig with my blues band, and uh, Samir and Lova, the bass player and the drummer from Siena Root, uh, they came uh, came to the gig and. Then uh, the day after, uh, they called me and uh, asked me if I uh, wanted to try to play guitar in Siena Root. And, yeah. What was appealing about them, about their band, to you? Um, I think uh, it was the it was the perfect music for me. It was uh, psychedelic rock with uh, a big blues influence. Uh. So, uh, yeah, I like it. So I, I tried to. Uh, so now you had to leave your own band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. But uh, I think uh, it was just a blues band, you know. Uh, so it was not a we didn't have a record or something we just played so it wasn't ah, it wasn't a hard decision of course gotcha the, the other guys understood they were okay with it yeah, yeah 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 hey I want to talk about a couple of the songs off the last two Sienna Root records that I really like um, and I had a question I know I asked you before but I want to ask you on on uh, on the show are you involved in any of the songwriting uh yeah um especially on the latest album yeah it's a lot more um you could tell that the influence of your songwriting because the the, the i i thought the songs were a little more um just textured a little bit more than the uh, last albums you know um yeah. like a little f fuller maybe yeah 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 maybe yeah. yeah i think the songs were a little little fuller than you know i mean i've always loved santa they're great music but you could tell the difference the, the songs seemed a little fuller um on pioneers from 2014 there's a song called in my kitchen i loved it. Yeah. it it's a really great song it's a slow blues, almost 10 minutes long. You're playing a lot of slide in that song. And I had a few questions. Uh, what guitar are you playing on there? And through what amp, if you remember? I think uh, I was playing my Les Paul or my 335. Um, I don't remember, actually, uh, which guitar I was using. Um, but uh, the amp was uh, Marshall GMP from 1978, I think. Oh, wow. I still have it. So, Yeah, it, it, you could tell it was a humbucker, that great, fat, yeah, yeah, bluesy sound, man. I loved it. It was awesome. The lyrics, I was curious if you know the lyrics, uh, the backstory. Like the lyrics seem to imply it's not an actual kitchen that you're talking about. No, it's, I don't know. I, it's uh, Samir, the bass player. Uh, he, uh, he's the one who has written the lyrics. And I think Kitchen is always the audience favorite uh, for some reason. I, I like it. Great too, song, actually. man. Yeah. And um, I think people uh, often is asking him, what do you mean about the lyrics? 
and uh, ah, he's always saying, "Ah, it's up to your own imagine." Yeah, ah, you know what? Like <laughs> Almost a lot of people people who write lyrics will say that. You know, they don't want to. Yeah. They don't want to take the meaning away from whatever it means to you. You know. No, exactly. But yeah, but it's. A, I think the lyrics is very good. I I like it, and I like the song too. We always play it live. And, yeah. yeah. Well, you get to stretch out quite a bit in that song, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a long, long psychedelic blues solo. <laughs> uh, and then from 2017, the album A Dream of Lasting Peace, there's a really cool song called The Piper Won't Let You Stay. It's another bluesy song, but it's more of a rocker. It's not a slow blues. But on that one, it sounded like you are playing a Strat. Were you? Uh, yeah, it's actually a Telecaster. Okay. Okay. Yeah, with the same amp. With with the Marshall. Yeah, with the Marshall amp, and uh, it's actually I I always play Les Paul or three thirty five yeah uh, humbucker guitars, but um, uh, yeah I think the Telecaster was quite cool on yeah. just that song and it's uh, yeah it sounds really really good. Oh, it sounds great. Yeah, it sounds phenomenal. You could tell it's the telly, you, or, you know, not. A, you could tell it wasn't a humbucker guitar. You know, you could tell it was a single coil pickup. It's just got yeah. that, that different sound, you know? Yeah. You are you currently split your time between Sienna Root, Lisa Leestum Family Band, and then uh, Heavy Feather. And I was curious, uh, what what prompted you to get involved in a third project? And and in, if to the extent you can talk about that band and, and the upcoming record, if you want to do that, yeah, actually it was uh, we just a uh, couple of friends that we have talked talked about it for a long time that we uh, have to write music together, and uh, and then we just ah uh, uh, oh, let's let's try to write some songs. And uh, and we found out quite early it was easy going to write songs. And after a few months, we had ten songs. Wow! So then we thought, ah, why don't why don't we just record it? And it was uh, no pressure, and uh, it was it's just fun. Yeah. So I think it's a very good record. It's. It's like um, our uh, we are four members: the drummer and Ola Göransson, a great drummer, um, and then a bass player called Morgan Korsmo, um, and he's very he's a master on this. Uh, Paul McCartney, Jack Bruce, old school yeah. bass playing, and. Um, and then it's Lisa Lee's I'm on uh, the vocals from oh, okay. uh, the Lisa Lee. So, um, and it's just a mix of our influences, like Free and Cream and uh, Mountain. Mountain Cre- Free oh, and Cream. Great. Yeah. Man, that's the almost the holy trinity. Those yeah. Three, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's some great, <laughs> some great music there, man. Um, did you guys record that in a... A recording studio or a home studio? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, the organ player in Siena Root, uh, Erka. Uh, he has uh, his own studio, and we uh, so he produced the whole thing and uh, mix it, and so he's yeah uh, in his studio. That's great. So the whole thing's mixed and engineered already. And it's just waiting for like. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, almost mixed, but uh, but it's a very simple production. It's I think we yeah. I think we recorded the whole album in two days, and everything is live. Wow, the are live and everything. So uh, that's really cool that everything is live in two days, man. That's pretty efficient. Yeah, we we thought that uh, we uh, had to do it simple. So, but I think that's the right way for that kind of music. So, yeah, I would think so. And it's called Tentatively Heavy Feather. So, everybody look for that. You're originally, yeah. you're originally from Uppsala. Now, is that, yeah. 
I know nothing about Sweden. Is that a city or a small town or a big? Uh, it's uh, it's a kind of in Sweden. It's the it's the fourth biggest city in Sweden, but it's you know like two hundred thousand people, and it's uh, it's uh, forty minutes away with train from Stockholm, which is the and, biggest city. Yeah, Stockholm is the biggest city. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so so it's that's great. So that's a pretty good place to live because you can get to Stockholm really quick. Like you take they have subways or buses. How would you get there? Yeah, it's uh, train. Trains they have. Okay, cool. Yeah, just trains. Do they have the? I'm sorry to ask you these stupid questions, but I don't know. Any, I would like to learn about other countries. Do they have the uh, the train system where you can go out of the country and into other countries, or is it only, or is that a separate system to the one? To go between Uppsala and Stockholm. Um, how do you mean? If you can go by train to Denmark? Or, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah, you can. That's really cool. Yeah, it's a train from Stockholm to Copenhagen. That's very. Cool. How long does that take? Uh, six six hours. Oh I think. wow! Okay, around six hours. Yeah, it's you know it's so different because here it's just such a massive country. Yeah, you know it's like one big country because like sometimes people say, "How come people in Europe travel so much?" Because the countries are, you know, they're much, the size of a state here. So yeah. of course you're going to travel, you know. And it's yeah. so cool because it's you go to a country next door, and it, it some maybe it's similar, but maybe it's very different. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I think it's different, but yeah, well, yeah like but in the states, you know, I can go from here to California, and it's like pretty similar. I'm in Florida; it's the opposite end of the country, and you know, we speak the same language and, you know, maybe some little quirky things are different, but food is 90% the same, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's weird. Uh, yeah. We have d different dialects here in Sweden that is totally different from each other. So. Even within Sweden. Different. Yeah. Even within so, the country. Yeah. yeah. But, but every, every, does everybody speak English in all the Northern Europe countries? Yeah, I think we are quite good yeah at the english yeah what, yeah. Uh, yeah they I think so they teach you in school like as you're growing up as a kid is that a does everybody yeah, have I to think, take english yeah from i think when we were seven years old or something how about your parents do they speak english uh, or would they have any reason to even if they do I just my parents uh, maybe they're not so good at English but I think uh, better than better in English than maybe in Germany or something so yeah yeah interesting so what was what was your childhood like growing up uh, it was it was very good it was very very good um my parents were very supportive with my guitar playing and everything they will i'm mean, driving to rehearsals and everything like that and yeah they and uh, took me to concerts and uh, kiss concerts and eric clapton concerts and everything like that so yeah it was yeah it was very good do you have any brothers or sisters that play music uh yeah, I have an older brother, three years older. And he plays yeah. music as well? No, no. Um, he's working with, uh, yeah, he's a, uh, he works with electric. Uh, electric. Electrician. Yeah, electrician. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Was that what your dad does? Is he electrician? Uh, sorry? Is your dad an electrician also? No, he's a mailman. Oh, he wow. Mailman. Yeah. That's wild. So, what is mail yeah. like over there? Well, how would you? I, you can't even answer that question. Sorry, I don't even know how to. Uh, what question I'm asking? I'd love to know how mail. Do you have mail seven days a week? Uh, no, just uh, five days a week. Yeah, Monday to oh, Friday. Okay. Uh, hey, let's talk about gear for a couple yeah. of minutes. What What's your primary guitar right now, and what other two guitars would round out your top three? Um. My number one is my Gibson Les Paul, I think, uh, and uh, and then I have a 
uh, guitar um, uh, Edwards 335. It's not a Gibson. It's a ah a guitar from Japan. Yeah, I've heard of them. And they t- these two guitars are very very good. I uh, what year is your Les Paul? I think it's um, 2004, 2003 or something. Mm, mm. Yeah, so it's a, a new one, but I I think I, I bought it in high school. And so I played on it and toured with it for 10 years or something. So it's a, it's a really good... I, I think I played on better Les Pauls, actually, but those are too expensive for me, so... I'm I'm pretty happy about my own. So that's good. So you got the the Les Paul, the Edwards three thirty five, and what would be the the next number three? Uh, maybe I have a Greco Fiber from nineteen seventy eight. Wow, that's that's a quite good guitar. But I, I always play on the Les Paul and three thirty five. <laughs> what is <laughs> anyway, that called? A, a Greco Fiber. A Greco, it's uh, yeah, yeah, Japan. Oh, okay, uh, Japan guitar. It's, uh, but it's good. Yeah, we it's, don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of Japanese guitars here, believe it or not. I mean, they're around, but you got to yeah. look for them. Okay, yeah, yeah. You don't really see. Them. I think probably because there's so many American guitars. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think. I mean, Europe, we have uh, actually a lot of those Japanese guitar. Yeah, yeah, I've spoken to a lot of players. They have that, and uh, like here, the you, you get them, you can get them on eBay. And there's people yeah. love the Japanese strats. I mean, they love them, but yeah. you don't if you can't go, really go into the store and see them. Maybe years ago at certain times you could, but not not anymore. Not anymore. No, but they're good. A, a little bit cheaper than a Gibson. Yeah, on that. yeah it, but it's still very good guitars. Yeah, yeah, they're very. I, I don't know anybody who's really complained about a japanese guitar that the the quality control there is really well really high apparently so yeah yeah who who influenced you playing wise I mean, you said some guys like free paul kossoff i'm assuming eric clapton yeah i think uh, the 60 uh, i think the clapton is my my number one hero uh especially the cream stuff yeah and uh, and then the the whole British the whole British blues boom with Pete Green and Mick Taylor, but but then of course I think when I so I listened to those Clapton things when I was a little kid, mm-hmm. but then I think I was 15 years old when I heard uh, the Allman Brothers for the first time. Okay, and I was totally blown away. Yeah. And then I read about the Phil Maurice album, the the record, and it uh, and it was written. It ah, this album is uh, one of the greatest live recordings ever. And then when I heard it, I was oh shit! Yeah, you can, you can, you can play the blues like this. And then it, I was totally sold out. Uh, just the combination between rock, jazz. Yeah, rock, jazz, and blues. Yeah, uh, I think it was, uh, and maybe totally. even a little country to some extent. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were great, great, great band. I saw them in two. You know, not the early, but I saw them in two thousand eleven. Yeah, with my son, who's your age, actually. Okay, and yeah. uh, my older son, and man, it was I think one of the greatest concerts we saw together. It was. You know, at the Beacon yeah. Theater up in New York City, and uh, yeah, yeah, just an, a magical moment. You know, just to see these guys. You know, they played over three hours, and yeah, just just a wonderful show to see these guys all playing. You know, to hear Greg Allman singing in front of you was was pretty special. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, I never seen all my brothers. I, I've seen Warren Haynes, but not mm. the all my brothers. But does he play out there? Did you see him with Government Mule or solo? Yeah, I saw him with the Government Mule. Uh, I think uh, 2006 or something. Hey, they uh, put on a great show. They play for three hours, man. They're great. Yeah, they're really great. And just Warren Hanson and Derek Trucks are so good. 
Uh, yeah, when Dicky Betts and Dwayne Allman is gone, so Warren Haynes and Derek Trucks are, yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah, they can play the guitar. Oh, and hell yeah. Tra- tradition. Absolutely, man. What's the, you ever sell a guitar that you wish you could get back? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, actually not. I, I bought my Les Paul for 10, 10 years ago, and then uh, it had been my first guitar sin- since that, so. Yeah. So. What, what was a, f- was that, what, do you remember the first CD you ever bought? Yeah, the first one was Dynasty with Kiss. Kiss Dynasty. And then I think the, I think the second one was Cream with Fresh Cream with Cream. Fresh Cream, good and, album, man. Yeah, it's so good. The guitar sound, it's so amazing. But I think that is a better album than Dynasty with Kiss. Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm one of these guys. I like. I I prefer Clapton from that era than the Stratocaster era. I really enjoy. I, I mean, he's obviously great, yeah. but he, he hits home to me more when he was playing. You know, his SG or his 335. I, yeah, I mean, yeah, just the fatter, muddier sound. I I kind of gravitate to. Yeah, yeah. Do you know the term Desert Island Discs? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Okay, so yeah. if you had to pick your top three Desert Island discs, but no particular order, any order you want, and only for today. So, like, don't worry, it's not forever. Tomorrow you could pick three more. So, like, right now, what would be the the first three that come to your mind? Okay, so so right now, okay. Uh, maybe when we talk about uh, All My Brothers Filmer East album, I think I, yeah. I picked that album. And then uh, um, maybe the the first Electric Flag record. Oh, yeah. Long time, long time coming. No, we are an American rock band, or <laughs> what's the name? I don't uh, know. The first the, Electric the- Flag. I have it. It was called. Let's see here. I can pull that up. Electric Flag. It was the trip. Uh, from a movie soundtrack, but it was it was long time coming. I think is the one you're talking long about. Long time coming. Yeah, long, with killing the one with Killing Floor on it and grooving is easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah some great good shit on there, man. Really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think anybody listening, I, if you've never heard that Electric Flag, a long time coming, it's a great record. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, one, I, right? I think the singer Nick Nick Gravenites. Nick Gravenides. Yeah, uh, Nick Gravenides. Yeah, okay. Nick Gravenides is a Greek name. That's how you pronounce. Man, I spoke to okay. him. I'm trying to get him on okay. the show. Because he he's such an amazing singer. I mean, he yeah. you know you know what he's like. And he sang I, I, with, with Mike Bloomfield on a lot of Bloomfield's records. Yeah, yeah. And I reached out to him about I don't know f- four months, uh, three three or four months ago, and I didn't hear anything. And then like after three or four weeks, I got an email from him. It said, "Hey, Craig." Uh, um, let's do the or something like you know uh, I'm interested, but give me some time, Nick. And I was like, oh my god, I'm so excited. I said, Nick, man, I'm really happy. Thank you. I'm really glad to hear from you, man. I'm really excited. And then I never <laughs> heard from him. And I and I followed up about like two months later, but I didn't hear back. So, but he's an okay. older he's an older. I'd love to have him. His voice is so beautiful, man, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think he's one of the best ones, and he's he's still. He's still not so famous, but uh, he's maybe maybe in uh, America, but here. No, he's he's not that. You know what though? He was he was really. It was back in the like late sixties. That's why you know, and and I don't know what yeah. he was involved with after the Electric Flag and after Mike Bloomfield and those guys. And I don't know if he did if he did much or what he did. That's what you know. I think he had a band in the eighties called uh, Gravenites and John Cipollina, the guitarist from uh, Quicksilver. Yeah, Messenger Quicks- I didn't know that. I'm going to look that up. Yeah. Thank you, man. It's. Uh, I think they record one album. It's. Yeah, it's great. It's more. It's blues. Yeah. It's good. It's really, really cool. Man, that's good. I never heard that. I'm going to check that out. 
Okay, so you got Fillmore East, Electric Flag, long time coming. What would be number three? Uh, uh, I think I will pick. Uh, I will choose the. It's a. It's an old seventies band from Sweden called Kebnekaise. It's uh, it's named after the the highest mountain in Sweden called Kebnekaise. Oh, cool! What kind of Maybe, music is that? It's like folk rock, folk rock style, and it's really, really, really good. You know, a lot uh, of players I interview from Sweden, they really like the old school f- Swedish folk music. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah. it is really good. Yeah, they really. I've never heard it. Where would I? What would I? What would I listen to if I wanted to l- listen to some Swedish folk music? What would you point me in the direction? Uh, yeah, you can listen to this uh, this album, uh, Kevin and Kai's. Uh, All right, spell two. that. Spell that. Uh, K E <laughs> K- yeah. B uh, N E K A G S E. Oh, just like it says, Kevin and yeah, Kags. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna check that out, man. Thank you. Cause- uh, and it's the and it's it's a very good guitar player called Kenny Håkansson. He's a great Swedish guitar player. Okay, I will check that. Because even when I interviewed David, he 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 mentioned, yeah. you know, he likes a lot of the old Swedish folk music because he grew up with that. His mom and dad used to listen to it. <laughs> Most important person in your life. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I think I have um, many. I don't think I can say just one, but it's my yeah, family and my nearest friends and my uh, music colleagues. Hmm. That's great. Any hobbies or interests outside of music? Actually not. I, I think that's one problem with when you have your when you have your when you are six years old and you wanted to be a guitar player or something musician that's the problem that you i want to have a hobby but i haven't haven't it's just the music so but i actually i wanted to i want to find a hobby that it's not music yeah but it's it's hard yeah Um, very hard um so that's yeah, that's one problem actually. Um, yeah, you're not alone. A lot of musicians. Sometimes I'll ask a musician. I said, "Do you have any hobbies outside of music?" And they say, "Guitar." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, you're not the only one. Hey, and last question, Matthias. Yeah. What are you looking forward to in the future, both musically and personally? I think, uh, of course, I will develop on my guitar playing and and be a better guitarist and play. I I think I want to play in in different, uh, in new uh, territoriums, in new countries and new, uh, because now I, it's Scandinavia and Germany and Austria and Switzerland and Denmark and everything like that, but Ah, to play in South America and Japan or something. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it's too much Europe right now. Yeah, <laughs> not not too much, but it's only Europe. Sure, sure. Well, man, come to the states. I'll come. Yeah, I'd love to see you play. We'll, we'll do this live. Yeah, yeah I hope so. <laughs> <I> hope so. <laughs> well, listen. Thank you very much for coming on the show. I love your music. I love your playing. I love your playing with Sienna Root. I'm excited to hear your playing with Heavy Feather. And let me know when it comes out. And I'd love to listen to it and tell my listeners about it. And everybody, let me tell you where to find. It's Matthias or Matte, M-A-T-T-E, Gustafsson, G-U-S-T-A-F-S-S-O-N. And the band, his primary band is Sienna Root. They're a great band out of Sweden. S-I-E-N-A root if you are into really cool blues psychedelic rock you need to check them out and especially if you like long jams and Matthias has been a part of the band the last two albums and uh, start there they're really good he's also playing with the Lisa Listam family band 
Oh, and Santa Root, you can find them at SiennaRoot.com, S-I-E-N-A-R-O-O-T.com. Lisa Listam is uh, L-I-S-A-L-Y-S-T-A-M dot S-E for Sweden. It's the Lisa Listam family band. And what kind of music do those guys do? Is it similar or? Uh, it's more, uh, it's not just uh, blues. It's blues rock, but uh, it's not psychedelic or something. It's more songs. Hey, listen, man, Matthias, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you coming on the show. Best of luck with Sienna Root and all your other projects and Heavy Feather. And um, thanks for coming on the show. And I'm looking forward to listening to more of your stuff. Thank you very much. Thanks. Take, you're welcome. Take care, man. Okay, everybody. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. Thanks again to Matthias Gustafsson for spending time with us. I really appreciate it. And make sure you go to everyonelovesguitar.com. Sign up to get our newsletter list right now. And remember, most important, happiness is a choice. So choose wisely. Be nice. Go play your guitar and have fun. Till next time, peace and love. And I'm out. We hope you enjoyed this show. If you did, subscribe to the Everyone Loves Guitar podcast, and you can do this online at everyonelovesguitar.com or on iTunes. And if you like the show, please leave us a five-star positive review. The more five-star reviews we get, the higher our show ranks, and higher rankings mean we get to continue speaking with cool, interesting guests on our show. We'll see you on the next episode, and until then, keep playing your guitar and have fun making music. 